Hey there, YouTube. So, this has been in the works for a while. Uh, this is uh, this is something that's been sitting on my workbench, half finished for some time, and uh, it's time to bring him out and talk with you guys about him. He's not done. Done. <laughs> There's some pretentious quote about you know great works of art are never finished, merely abandoned. Uh, it's maybe too grand to use for this, but uh, I like the spirit of that. I think it applies here because I'm probably going to play with the paint job for a while. Uh, but I've got some other stuff I really need to work on uh, before the convention at the end of this month. Uh, so this is Stormbreaker, uh, the hammer of Beta Ray Bill, which you probably knew if you clicked on this video. I feel like you're hip like that. Um, but yeah, I, you know, for anybody who doesn't know, I've been working on a Beta Ray Bill costume for a while. Took it to Denver Comic Con, didn't go great. I'm going to fix him up and take him to Colorado Springs Comic Con at the end of this month. Uh, and the first stage of that, which it shouldn't have been, was finishing up this guy uh, and getting him looking good and ready for uh, for the con. So I'm going to run through precisely how I built him, although it's really not that interesting. I apologize. Mostly it was a matter of finding the right objects to glue together. Uh, so he started his life, as you can hopefully not tell, uh, as a plastic Easter egg that I put on a stick. Um, now, the, the trickiest part was finding the right objects to make the head. Because uh, I didn't sculpt this from scratch, I found a bowl and a planter uh, that were the right, like, outline for, uh, for the edge of the hammer. Uh, and then chopped them up and glued them together. See? Really not, really not super complicated. Man, I should talk that up more. Anyway. Uh, I then filled the entire hammer with uh, expanding foam, uh, which has made him heftier than I'd like, all things considered, but it's made him pretty secure. Still pretty lightweight, and... I real... I want him to be safe. Like, I made this because of Denver Comic Con's prop standards, and the problem is, when you're making a fake hammer, if it's still a heavy thing on a stick, it's basically an actual hammer, so hopefully it's fine. Hopefully it's fine. Anyway, uh, so the front of it is just a round piece of wood that, you know, again, I bondoed everything together so it looks like it's all part of the same piece. Uh, I am working off of the design from Journey into Mystery, from the late issues of Journey into Mystery. Uh, mostly. Uh, the, the late Journey into Mystery has more of a, a not a conical, a, a cylindrical chunk separating these two things, and I didn't want that necessarily. Uh, I kind of like the way the silhouette looks now. Uh, it is sort of a cross between how the hammer looks now and how it looks back when it was introduced in the 80s, uh, although not quite entirely either of those. So this is a little bit my own design, mostly because of the Easter egg. But I knew I wanted that taper uh, as he got to uh, the axe blade kind of portion at the back of the hammer. Anyway, I got to, I got off on a tangent there. On the front of it, again, Journey into Mystery design, where it's sort of divided into these three sections. Initially, I was going to have uh, these much more separate uh, and a much deeper groove, you know, because there was kind of a, a slot in what was the base of the bowl that made up the front of the hammer. But that was going to be hard, and it was going to take a lot of time, and it was probably not going to add a whole lot to the overall look of the hammer. So I skipped that and just kind of carved the pattern into the piece of wood on the front of it. Uh, yeah. So talking about the axe blade on the back of it, which was kind of the biggest hang-up for the longest time on the piece, uh, because this was initially one of those like round wooden plaques with the beveled edges uh, cut in half and the halves glued together and then put in the back of the Easter egg. Uh, initially, I had uh, it cut more uh, to where it came out flat at a right angle from the Easter egg, and then it sloped down to the edge. And um, after I did that, I realized I didn't like it. Um, I kind of had to, to roll with, uh, with the punches and sort of work with the object as it was becoming what I wanted it to be. Uh, so I went through and sanded that down uh, all to... Uh, all to a pretty smooth, even curve uh, to the edge, and I like that a lot better. It gives 
like that that weird edge just kind of like interrupted the flow of the piece if i'm not sounding too pretentious with that anyway uh so i'm much happier with that now um yeah that mostly talks about like the overall shape of how i got the hammer uh except for the uh this thing and this thing which are actually the lids from uh neuro water with uh, little just bits of plastic glued on the the kind of weird grooves they have cut in them but they were just like exactly the right kind of uh cone with a flat top i wanted for this uh, again totally a, a kind of a found object piece uh, i'm still considering adding little uh, celtic knots to this to sort of uh kind of bring them in line with mjolnir's design i'm not 100 percent sure on that though i'm the jury is still out. Let me know your thoughts in the comments below. But yeah, I also pretty specifically made him uh, as close to Mjolnir's size as possible. He's a little bit bigger, but he's a little bit leaner, so I think it evens out. Good stuff. Um, yeah, as for the handle, uh, uh, Stormbreaker is unfortunately kind of the little brother of Mjolnir, so he got his hand-me-downs. Uh, these are actually uh, the handle wrappings from my Mjolnir, which I made. If you guys haven't watched any of my previous videos, be sure to check them out. Uh, anyway, handle wrapping from a previous version of Mjolnir. Uh, I went through and changed the handle wrappings when I went from my Thor the Dark World costume to my Age of Ultron costume. Saved the wrappings, kind of wanted to use them on a sword or something, but when I decided to do this project, um, I don't know, I might be lazy. I just decided to use him on this. Now, Stormbreaker is pretty much always depicted as being solid gold. Everything's gold. Even the handle is all gold-colored. Uh, and where I do have some kind of gold-colored leather underneath these, uh, I sort of wanted to use these A because I love, like, the texture in your hand. It feels very iconic. It feels specific. It feels like Mjolnir. Now, it's inaccurate because it's based on the Ruby's cheap prop Mjolnir hammer back when I was not working with the best reference, um, but I still like the way it feels, and particularly with uh, my big floppy rubber Beta Ray Bill hands, I'm going to need that extra texture to hold on to. Uh, so again, that's another thing in the comments that I'm a little curious on other people's opinions of. If they like the, uh, the brown handle wrapping, or if they'd prefer straight up gold uh like it is in the comic books um yeah and i already talked about what makes up uh the end cap on that uh, let's talk about the paint job which there won't necessarily be a ton to talk about on that because a i'm not entirely sure i'm done with it if i do more work on this guy it will be the paint job but i've got a couple other things i've got to i've got to deal with before the end of the month like being able to see in my beta ray bill mask i've got some problems i need to fix with that um, and also some problems with the tights, because I kind of had to sort of cover that up uh, for uh, for Denver. So, yeah, got to gotta fix that. So this is going to take a little bit of a backseat, but he's still pretty much done. It's mostly just uh, kind of kind of polishing up the paint job. So I started off with a coat of silver spray paint, mostly because uh, I can't remember if I mentioned this, but when I bondoed things together... Uh, there are a couple rough spots. Uh, partially, I think that uh, planter I used uh, for this sort of middle section didn't sand too well, so that ended up really scratched up, and there are there are just some rough spots, and I would have liked to have taken more time with that, but I've sort of realized one of the problems I have with finishing things is I tend to get hung up on really specific little details, and I spend way too much time on them, uh, and then I get burned out on the entire project. Uh, <laughs> Which sounds lazy, I know. Um, but if you guys have ever heard the saying, the perfect being the enemy of the good, I think that's part of my problem. And I'm still working out a happy medium there. Uh, yeah, so that's that section's a little rough. So something I knew I needed to do with the paint job was hide the crimes, as, uh, as Adam Savage uh, says. So I started out with a bright silver coat of spray paint because I had bright silver spray paint, and that really outlined exactly the problem areas I was going to have to cover up. Uh, then I went through and sponged on... Um, see, I sponged on gold paint first, and then gold and yellow matte paint over the top of it to kind of give it a nice mottled, weathered, uh, been-all-around-the-galaxy look. Didn't like that. Uh, and if nothing else, I knew I was going to add... Um, 
dang it, what's that called? Rub and buff. That's the thing, rub and buff. Uh, I added gold rub and buff to it. Um, and that's another thing I haven't worked with a lot, so I'm still kind of figuring that out. But I practically coated the entire thing in gold rub and buff, and then added a, a little bit of... Let's see, that was gold paint mixed with burnt sienna paint, just a really light sponging of that uh, over the top of it. Again, like to make a nice, really complex paint job, I'm just adding layers uh, until it looks right. The truth of the matter is I don't know what I'm doing. <laughs> I kind of, I know in theory what I'm doing, and I'm just sort of in practice trying to feel it out. Um, so yeah, Rub and Buff, and then the Burnt Sienna. Uh, and these are all really subtle, as the pictures coming up on the screen have probably uh, probably shown you. Um, and then to kind of take that back, I just took a fingernail and kind of scraped up uh, that top layer of paint a little bit, which gave it a little bit of the, uh, the really brushed metal look Mjolnir has. Um, my homemade one doesn't execute that as well, but uh, yeah, for screen you for like screen Mjolnir props and really good replicas, they they have that sort of brushed texture. Uh, and then the top layer on that, which is one of the the things I personally have, again, it's not my trademark. I'm not well known enough to have a trademark, but it's something I've worked with on other projects where I use um, like metallic pens to really bring out specific details uh, and edging and weathering on a prop. Uh, on previous things like Bill's helmet, uh, I've used like Sharpie sized markers, which ends up looking kind of cartoony, which isn't bad for some things. It just specifically looks cartoony. And that wasn't exactly what I wanted for Mjolnir. Mjolnir. Stormbreaker. My bad. My bad. It's okay. He really is the little brother of, uh, of hammers. Um, yeah. Anyway, so I went with uh, one of those really fine point really nice like scrapbooking you got to shake them up and then press them down a couple times cold markers uh, and that's where i've been adding these kind of scratches to the hammer hopefully that shows up on video it might not i have terrible lighting in here anyway i'm not entirely sure i'm happy with that um i like it in principle but they're um it's a little bit too pronounced and it's not everywhere enough. So I'm probably gonna fiddle with that a little bit on my way to uh, to the con, but I've got some other things I really need to work on before then. So this guy is done for now. Um, and I hope you found how I went through and made him interesting. If not, I made a bad video and I apologize. But thanks for spending your time on it, uh, and hopefully you guys enjoy what I do enough to stick around for the next thing. I'll see you there.